and welcome back to Bright Nights at OKC. This is a podcast about knitting and other fiber crafts. Um, I'm Brittany. I live in Oklahoma City and I knit a lot <laughs> and I like talking about knitting. Um, so full disclosure, this is the second time this week that I've recorded this episode. Um, I got finished the other night, like Sunday. It's Wednesday right now. Um, I... <laughs> Got finished recording on Sunday and I went to go airdrop the video to my husband and then I realized that you could see like directly through the shirt that I was wearing and I was like, that's not going online. <laughs> so yeah, it's taken me a few de- days to have time to record again. But that's okay because I'm slightly more prepared this time because of it. <laughs> um... I have three finished objects and a few whips and a few recent uh, yarny type purchases that I've made. Um, So I'll just get started with what I'm wearing. I finally kind of finished my pink velvet sweater by Andrea Mowry. Um, I've been working on this for a while. It's the first color work sweater that I've done. And um, I think it's the first fingering weight sweater that I've done too. It took a while. (laughs) Like the stitches are real tiny. Um, Yeah, but yesterday at knit night, I um, seamed up all the spots where I had joined New Yarn and uh, I wore this to work today. And I was going to lengthen the sleeves because part of it is the yarn, part of it is that I'm a a lot more like long in the body and arms than a lot of people. And Andrea Maori's tiny. So um, I, I added, believe it or not, I added like an inch or two to the sleeves. And there's still like more three quarter length than full sleeves. Um, and I believe the pattern was for full sleeves, so I don't know where I went wrong on that. Maybe the fit just isn't the same on me as it is on Andrea or the test knitters. Um, anyway, so I wore this to work today and I think I'm actually okay with the sleeve length. Um, I kind of enjoyed it. I, sometimes at work I push my sleeves up anyway, so I think I'm going to leave those alone. But what I am going to do is lengthen it. I am not a person who wears crop tops unless it's over 100 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Um, I just don't feel comfortable in them. I never have, even before I turned 30 and um, started gaining weight where I didn't before. Uh, I just don't. It's not comfortable for me, (laughs) Um, even with high-waisted. These are high-waisted jeans, and I wore um, a skirt that was, like, high-waisted today to work. And the skirt was, like, to here, to my normal waist, but if I raised my arm, like, like you can see way too much. So, um, I think I will be adding, like, two or three inches to the bottom. You can see the color work. Sorry, I didn't show you a second ago. That's the color work. I really love this. I love the way it looks, but um, I, I need to add a couple more inches to it. Like maybe I didn't try it on correctly before when I decided, oh, I have like two more inches then I can start the ribbing. Um, anyway, I'm going to fix it. That's the great thing about um, knitting your own sweaters is you can change anything you want, even after the fact. <laughs> um The other thing that I finished was this hat that I started in October, I think. (laughs) Um, So this is the Blood Thistle by Faye Kennington. And um, it's just a really beautiful color cat with thistle on it. Yeah, it's a beret fit. Like, I like to wear it like this, like a beret. Um... I guess you could wear it a different way, too. I think when I 
had a picture on, on Instagram. I was wearing it like more over my forehead, like that, like, like a tam kind of fit. Anyway, I really love this. Um, I opted to do similar colors to the one that Faye has like as the example, um, because I just love a good like burgundy wine color. And um, this is like a little bit gray. Yeah. And this yarn is seventh floor yarn. I believe it's the DK Yak. I'll put it, <laughs> I'll put it down below and probably on the screen. I think it's seventh, seventh floor yarn, DK Yak. And it's like, really beautiful yarn um yeah so I finished that finished so many things last in the last few weeks <laughs> which I don't usually do I'm really slow and I have too many projects most of the time I'm like where, where can I put this I'll put it right here <laughs> um the next thing I finished was this cowl that I'm making as a gift for somebody. And this is the, uh, this is the Accent on the Upbeat Cowl by Stephanie Shimon. And I used a yarn, like a local yarn. This is uh, alpaca, it's 100% alpaca. And um, it was dyed, and I think that the alpacas live um, in Jones, which is like right outside Oklahoma City. Um, so this is from Just Right Alpacas. And it's so soft and I love the colors. This color was called Opening Night. And it kind of, they have a, on New Year's Eve, they have a, um, an event kind of called Opening Night downtown. Maybe that's where she got the color name. <laughs> kind of looks like fireworks or a sunset. Yeah, I'm sending this off, um, hopefully tomorrow or the next day. It, it'll probably take a while to get to the recipient, but I'm very excited about that. I'd never knit a cowl before, and I'd never used alpaca yarn before, and I really like it. Um, the thing about it, I think, is that it has no memory. So while it's really good with for things like cowls and shawls and scarves and stuff I don't think it would be good for like even a hat and definitely not for a sweater but it works for this and um it has these pearl rows I don't know if you can see it <laughs> right here there's like three rows of pearls and there's one right there and it, so it kind of gives it a little bit of structure yeah I think that was a free pattern um available on Ravelry. So yeah, that was that one. So those are all, those are all of my FOs that I have for today. Um, so since I cast off so many things, I got to cast on a bunch of stuff. So I, the first thing I cast on, which I think I talked about this in the last episode, um, I started, well, actually I saw this I saw this pattern, I think, on Ravelry. Yeah, I think I saw it on Ravelry and I was like, that is the prettiest like t-shirt type boat neck shirt I've ever seen in my life and I have to make it. <laughs> Even though it's winter and technically this is like a spring knit. Um, but let me get my book out here. It's from this book called Elemental Knits, and it's called the Yamka Boatneck or the Yamka Plover. It's called Yamka Boatneck in here, and that's what it'll look like. Yeah, so it's like this really nice, like relaxed fit sweater with a bunch of texture on it, and then a lace detail up here. So I I'm really loving it so far. Um, you knit it bottom up and I've never knit anything that was full garter stitch before and but I really like it it's like super squishy and um, I, I really like the texture of it 
so that that is what that looks like up close. Um, this is a chick that knits. Um, I think it's the sock yarn. Let me see if I have the if I have the thing. Yeah, this is the deluxe sock yarn, so it's superwash, extra fine merino, and 15% nylon. So, and it's called Brambleberry. It kind of reminds me of like a blackberry pie kind of color or raspberry pie. I just love it. It has little flecks of like yellow in it and sometimes a blue and like brown and orangey colors. But it's mostly this like raspberry. And then this is, some of it is like off white and then some of it veers toward like a very pale pink. But it's, wow, well, I was obsessed with the yarn and I was like, I have to make something out of this. And I'm so excited about this. Um, I tried this on the other day um, before I recorded the podcast that will never be shown online. Um, <laughs> just to make sure that it was fitting right. And it did. So, yay, I don't have to restart it. <laughs> I don't know how it's going to fit like around the top. Maybe I should put it back on and try again, but just in case. But this is what I've been carrying around as like easy knitting because I have to knit like quite a few inches. This is the bottom part. So I, I have to knit like quite a few inches of this before I do anything else. So I've been taking it around to like knit night and to work with me. Too. I like to relax before work, so I sit there with my tea or coffee and listen to an audiobook and just knit for like 15 or 20 minutes um, before I clock in. But yeah, uh, that's a really fun project, but I cast that on and then I realized like, what am I doing? It's winter. <laughs> that is obviously like a spring summer top, maybe even fall here in Oklahoma. But um, yeah, it's winter, so what am I doing? So then I cast on just this last weekend. Um, I think I, I swatched for it Friday night, and I got gauge for the first time ever. <laughs> I never I never hit gauge. Um, I did do a gauge, kind of did a gauge swatch though. <laughs> But um, this is Wool of the Andes yarn, but it's not the Superwash one, so it's really not going to grow. Um, so I started my Blueberry Pie sweater that I've been really excited about ever since Aro from Iron and Some Pearls posted her, like, test knit that she was doing. I was like, I have to make that sweater. I love cables. I love um, just the design that's on it. I love the textured parts of it um yeah so I had to do it so I cast this on Saturday morning I think I did a little gauge swatch in moss stitch and this color is called uh actually I don't remember um it was in my head and then it flew out um solstice heather is what this color is and I'm not usually a blue into blue but um the the blueberry pie like photos are really pretty and she showed one in yellow and one in blue uh let me pull one up I think I have it pulled up a different page yeah this is by Joanna Coonan or Joanna Coonan and she has where is it yeah so she included um a version that's like straight down and longer and then she included like more of a cropped maybe not as cropped as this turned out but um a cropped version that's wider and that like goes out kind of like an a so you have a little bit more room and i think i'm going to knit the straight down version and then i figured i could always like go back later if i really love it and if if i want another one i can make the the more cropped version of it. So this is the, this looks kind of out of focus, but this is the cropped version in the blue. 
or you can kind of see the texture. I'll show you a different picture too. Um, and then this is the yellow. That's like straight, straight down. There you go, you can see the texture of it. Um, yeah, I'm, there's a lot of moss stitch and a lot of cables and quite a few baubles on this, on this pattern, um, but I'm not scared. <laughs> I actually, um, Sunday night, my friend Lily was over and we do that a lot. We do like sit in it and then our husbands play video games and stuff, um, a lot on Sundays. So, um, I had, I had knit quite a few rows for me anyway. I knit about to here, but I got to a spot where like I, I got through the bobbles really well and then I did the next row which is mostly knitting and um I was like why why do I not have enough still like enough stitches in this section that repeats and I figured out that I was doing the bobbles wrong well they're written wrong um I do, I'll double check that they're written wrong, but I'm, pr I'm pretty sure they're written wrong because I'd never done bobbles before and I followed it exactly how it said. So, um, I had to, I had to tink back and, um, which is like going back to undo what you've done. Um, but one stitch at a time instead of ripping back. Uh, so I had to redo it and I was sitting there for like, literally two hours going, I don't understand what's wrong. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I've done. I did exactly what it said to do. And finally, I figured out that like, one of the stitches, you're supposed to like make two, and then or add two. And then you use all three stitches. So one of the stitches is where the bobble is pictured to be in the pattern. And then you add two, two extra stitches and then you use those three stitches to make the bobble. But um, how it was written or how I was doing it, um, you only added one. So then you only had two stitches to work with. So then I accidentally was taking the next stitch away from the stitch pattern and using it in the bobble. So that was not fun. But I've, I've made a pretty good progress, I think, for only working on this one day. I got all my bobbles back. I started the the cables. Um, I think it's gonna be really nice. This yarn feels good. It's gonna be a very thick, like cold weather sweater or office sweater <laughs> when they don't when they don't have it warm enough in the office. I'm excited to do that, but I think it might take me a little bit. This is my concentrate and please don't talk to me pattern. <laughs> <laughs> until I until I get more comfortable with it with the the way that it's written and the stitch patterns and all the cable patterns and all of that so that's my difficult project and then I have another like kind of easy project that I cast on um a few of my friends are having babies and I think I talked about this in a in an episode before I'm gonna make um is all tangled I'm gonna make a onesie and a pair of pants and maybe a little pair of like booty booty socks for them um so this yarn is caramel by chick fit knits and I think this is also sock yarn um and it's this really beautiful color <laughs> I'm stuck to things um it's this really pretty color. I, I got like the back of the bottom done. So this is what I did. I don't know, maybe Saturday, maybe Thursday night. I can't remember. Um, I did that much and it's this really pretty like goldy color. And then for the pants, I'm going to use Admiral. This color called Admiral. This really nice blue color. More like that. Um, and that's by Chick Fit Knits also. And I'm using these two patterns from the same designer. 
and their name is let me go back to our projects um yeah this is the 41 romper by florence merlin it's part of a set i think called little french knits and so i'm doing that this romper and let's see if i can get a good picture it's got a little, little bit of texture on the top. Yeah. So that's that one. And then I'm making I'm making these little pants that are called the Wolf Folk Baby Pants 2. And they're these little like joggers. So making those to go with it in the blue color. Um, I really need to work on those some more because I'm gonna run out of time. <laughs> and I still have to make like a second set for somebody else. But I'll get to it and I'll get it done. I don't think those babies are due until like March and April. So I think I think I have a little bit of time. Um, those are all my whips right now. I have a few other little things that I need to finish, but I think that one of them is one of the fingerless gloves that I've been working on. I really just need to do the other one and then do my set for myself. Um, yeah. But I bought a few things, a few yarny things. I think I talked about, I talked about um, Christmas sweaters for next, no, not for next year, for next Christmas this year. Um, in my, in one of my last episodes, I talked about that and I bought some yarn for my husband's and that came in and I showed it in the last one. And then I got this yarn for mine and this is, uh, Estelle Yarns Eco Tweed DK and this is in silver and where's the color? Teal. They have simple color names. Uh, silver and teal. And I'm going to make for myself an Olava by Arna and Carlos. And I will pull that up here. I should have pulled these up in different tabs, but it didn't occur to me until now. It's in my queue, though. I think I'll start making these probably in spring or summer. So it shouldn't take me too long since they're DK weight. Yeah, so the lava is this really has an interesting shape and then it has a blue snowflake on it. Theirs is more of an oatmeal color, but I thought I would wear the silver more. More often, I would be more apt to wear it. So yeah, that's what I'm making with that. And I, I got, I think, five skeins of this and then one of the teal. Hopefully I don't need more because I did order them from Canada. From I think from Quebec because they the website was in French, which was fine because I can read French. <laughs> but yeah, it did take a while to get here. Um then I didn't have well, I did have one of these things, but I didn't have the two other things um when I recorded the other day. <laughs> On the video that will that will never see the light of day. Um, I did buy another knit kit because I like the other one so much that I was like, you know, this would be really good to have another one so I could put it like in my main project bags that I'm working and taking with me places. Um, so if you don't know, this is a knit kit. And I this one I think is called Sweater Weather or something like that. Um, it has little birds and a little fair isle pattern. Uh, this has a very handy measuring tape. And it has row counters. And it'll actually like move into the hundreds if you keep clicking. Um, and then in a little compartment on the back, 
It has scissors and it comes with some stitch markers, like different kinds of stitch markers, and then some caps for your needles. These little caps. And it comes with a little embroidery needle for hiding ends and sewing up holes. Does anyone else have holes? So last night at knit night, I'm fairly new at knitting and I my finishing is not what you would call like professional looking. It's kind of a mess sometimes. I'm just kind of like, well, that's good enough. It's hidden. No one can see it. Um, I've actually been been expecting all day for like big for long things to come out of here like this <laughs> like that <laughs> um but luckily they didn't while I was at work um and I I have trouble with the armpits so like when you when you start knitting for the sleeves I always get holes and last night my friends at knit night told me to like weave weave it like like you're weaving a patch kind of so that's what I did I don't know if you can tell I haven't even looked at it up close <laughs> other than while I was doing it um but that's what I did but if anyone has any tips or videos or anything like that I would I would like to watch that because I need help <laughs> and I, th I know that it's something that a lot of people have trouble with um, it's not just me. <laughs> so I was ordering some stuff from Amazon the other day. Um, I was ordering like cardstock and a little paper cutter because my sister-in-law got me a little stamp that says knitted by Brittany on it. And, um, I was like, oh, I'm going to need some like cardstock. And I ordered a little hole punch too, but that's, that hasn't come in yet. Um, so I can put little tags on gifts that I make for people. So I ordered some like really pretty cardstock that was like a bunch of different colors. I mean, obviously this knitting habit, um, this knitting habit and hobby has led to like adjacent things. So I got, I have a, a bunch of cardstock now <laughs> so I can make pretty little tags. And um, got a little paper cutter back there and a stamp. I think I want to get like different colored ink for the stamp too. Just in case I want to do it in a different color besides black. Um, anyway, so while I was doing that, I looked at knitting books to see what was up and what was on there. So I got this Vogue Knitting, the ultimate quick reference. Ultimate quick reference, completely revised and updated. So that's this. It looks backwards to me right now, but I don't know if it will be for you. Sorry if it is. And it just has a bunch of like techniques and how stitches like this shows you how to like make one right and probably make one left. And sometimes you need help for that. And I figured you know, um, what if, what if the electricity is out one day and I'm knitting to pass the time and I don't really know how to do something or I forgot how to do something. Oh, this is interesting. Um, I haven't even flipped through this. Uh, it shows you like how to cast on for vertical stripes and, uh, it kind of shows you like How to intertwine your your yarn and it has like colored illustrations and stuff so I think this is gonna be a really handy thing to have um, and it has six sections in it I'll put a link to probably the Vogue knitting website so it has basic techniques finishing that's the chapter I need to read <laughs> finishing <laughs> Yeah, designing. So this is gonna be really handy. I think this was a good purchase. And then 
I got. Um, okay, so caveat before I start talking about this. Um, she who must not be named, I'm not happy with her, and you'll get who I'm talking about uh, in a minute, but um, I do not agree with anything that she says on Twitter or any of the dumb stuff she's come out of her mouth lately. Um, <laughs> no, she's dead to me. But uh, I do, I do think that um, the patterns in this book and the patterns in the first version of this are, some of them are really cute, and um, there's some really great designers who participated in these books. And I don't know if they have anything to do with What's-Her-Face, um, but uh, they're really nice designs. Anyway, so I bought the Harry Potter Knitting Magic, the second version. It's called More Patterns from Hogwarts and Beyond. And I basically I saw these gloves, these little owl gloves, and I was like, I think I'm gonna knit those. Those are cute. And then I started looking at some of the other patterns that are in this one. Like you can make Hermione's little bag, you know, the magic bag. Yeah, it has cute stuff in here. Uh, here's a Horcrux cowl that looks cute. And I have the ebook of the first one. I haven't knit anything out of it yet, but I plan to. Um, and then this one wasn't wasn't available as an ebook, but yeah, I, I just went and grabbed this because it looked nice. There are a few things in here that I'm definitely going to knit. Uh, to find them, you can do a felted hat. Um, from, I think it's from Fantastic Beasts. You could do this felted hat. It looks really cool. That looks kind of like my style. I might have to make that. I've never felted anything before, but it's first time for everything. There's a closer look at Hermione's bag. It's a really pretty knitted bag. That would make a really nice like, project bag to take to knit night <laughs> or to work or wherever. There's a cape. Oh, there's this really pretty like lacy shawl, giggle water shawl. That looks nice. Yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of things in here. A bunch of like really nice looking patterns. Oh, this one looked really cool. Um, it has an outline of Hogwarts castle on it. So yeah, so I got that. I'm gonna knit some things from it and I'm gonna, I'm having like kind of like a second knit night tonight. Um, we, this cider place that we go to, he's, the owner has been doing hot cider since it's cold outside and he didn't have it last night, but we kind of begged him to make it today since it's gotten colder today. We're actually due for snow. I don't know if it's gonna happen. Sometimes it doesn't hear. They're like, oh, snow, and absolutely nothing happens. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna take this there so my friends can look through it. Um, I think that's all I have for today. Uh, I do have a recommendation, and my recommendation is Needles at the Ready podcast. And I've been watching their stuff for a while, um, their names are Kevin and Ray, and they live in Connecticut, and they are really fun. They do, like, book recommendations and TV and movie recommendations, too, at the end of their podcasts. And I was like, maybe I need to do that. Like, maybe I should share with you guys what I'm reading, because I am reading all the time. <laughs> I don't read as much as I used to. Um, I used to read, like, two or three books a week. But I don't have the time for that anymore. Um, I do listen to audiobooks while I'm knitting a lot of the time. Um, yeah, I read. I I mostly read like historical fiction and um, contemporary fiction. Like uh, I forget what they what the genre is. Like literary fiction or something. I don't know. I like those books. Um, 
and I and I like sci-fi and fantasy books depending on how cheesy they are. Anyway, <laughs> Kevin and Ray talk a lot about like sci-fi books and fantasy. Maybe not so much sci-fi, maybe more fantasy novels and things like that. Anyway, they're from Stratford, Connecticut, and they also have a podcast, and um, they talk about what they are knitting on and yarn that they bought, and um, they have a lot of coupon codes, which is cool, and I've, I've found some really cool uh, yarn shops. Um, I bought some stuff from Trilogy Yarns because I, I saw their yarn on, on Kevin and Ray's podcast. So they are at Needles at the Ready Pod, like that at sign, Needles at the Ready Pod on Instagram. And then if you just search Needles at the Ready, you'll find them on YouTube. Um, I'll show you a picture of them. That's Kevin and Ray. They're very nice. <laughs> or they seem very nice. I don't know. Um, yeah. So that's all I have for you today. Um, stay safe. Make good decisions. Wear your mask. And happy knitting. Bye.